So here we are, ready to set up our domains in SendGrid. Let me share my screen. Funny story. Second time I'm recording this because first time I did not record my screen. So I always love it when that happens. Which gave me time to finish my coffee. Um, and I should be a um, bit, uh, bit sharper now. So, so I set up all these records right here. I have this really generic domain, DealBridge Consulting. Um, funny story. I asked, um, I have a lot of funny stories to share. You'll find. Um, so I asked chat GPT to come with a bunch of generic business domains that I could use to set up. Um, and this is one of the ones that I did, um, that it suggested I have, I bought about 10 domains yesterday evening before going to bed. Um, and whenever I want to run some, you know, wild experiment or whenever I have a thought that I want to run or, um, there's different things I want to test then these are the domains that I can be, that I can use for that. So that's why I'm setting this up. Now, what we're doing is in SendGrid, we're um, going to send authentication and we're setting up um, domain authentication. So you have the option to do domain authentication or single sender. Now, in our case, we want to do domain authentication. We want to send from multiple aliases or inboxes or whatever from the same domain. Not actually inboxes. We're just going to use aliases. We're not going to actually set up an inbox for this. Um, so um, we're going to authenticate the entire domain for sending. These are the records that we have to set up. So um, we already dropped them in here. Um, pretty straightforward. I'm using Namecheap for domains. And um, you set up all the, you know, the records in here, then the values of the targets in there. I'm using time to live 30 minutes in my personal experience, my personal bias. That is uh, what propagates the fastest. That's probably wrong uh, because I tried it and it didn't uh, find them yet. So we're trying that again, see if we can verify them, even though it's only been you know, a couple of minutes. So there we go. Um, so we authenticated this domain as a sending domain in, um, in SendGrid. And um, that this is still showing us pending, which is funny, but should be good to go. And so we can start adding this. We want to set up um, SPF as well, and then add it to smart lead. So let's see SPF. Um, yeah, we'll set that up. We'll change that to, to SendGrid. Then um, we're going to set up multiple aliases in a smart lead. I talked to the support team um, and they said that technically, you know, it's not something that you should be able to do, but I am able to do it only with smart lead. So I tried it with um, uh, different senders. Now I forgot which ones, like oh, with Milgun, didn't work with Milgun. Uh, I tried it with a bunch of different ones, didn't work. But with, uh, with, uh, with SendGrid, you can, so you can set up all these different aliases. You don't have to create inbox or nothing. You can just set up different aliases. It will rotate through them and we'll just send emails to SendGrid. Performance isn't great. You know, that's the little asterisk or disclaimer there. Even though warm is looking all right, it's 97%. And even like I've been spamming quite a bit from this domain, but it's been warming up for a while now and like rewarming. 97% in inbox, but um, then SendGrid statistics always show something different. So, you know, it's, um, it's kind of tricky, you know, what you need to rely on. And um, I've noticed that, you know, reply rates, whenever sending campaigns aren't great, you have these really advanced tracking statistics in SendGrid, but then again, it doesn't track like certain certain um, ESPs, like tracking is really off. So my my guess, guesstimate is that for domains that I buy warm up for a week and start sending at decent volume, like sending hundreds and hundreds, sometimes up to a thousand emails per day, I'm getting like a 25 to 30% open rate initially. Sometimes that drops a little bit, sometimes that remains stable, but you know, you can, like, you can skip a lot of the warm up. You just want to warm up for a couple of days. Like, technically, you don't have to if you have an older domain um, because you're sending from, you know, uh, SendGrid shared IPs and all that. So like, you don't have to warm it up. But if you warm it up for a little bit, then, you know, you can get like 30-ish percent open rates with, with in, which in a lot of cases is decent enough, like for client work, uh, important work, not ideal, but for the stuff that I'm doing, just testing different 
angles, offers, uh, different copy, different infrastructure, like different ways of sending this, with sending methods, um, happy with it. And it gets me the results that I want, as in, you know, enough replies for me to be able to determine whether or not the test was successful or not. So been warming up 97% It's saying in landing inbox. Um, I'm not sure about that, but you know, if it's true, I'll take it. Then, um, how we're setting this up is, um, so you have your, so you have the from name, the from email, you just, um, it needs to be a unique email. So in like the same way you set a regular inbox, right? Whenever you set up, uh, like, a Google admin panel or whatever, and different inboxes for domain, you set up different aliases. So Hans at Hans Decker at Decker Hans at yada, yada, yada. Then username is API key. Then password is your actual API key from SendGrid. Then SMTP host is smtp.sendgrid.net. The port is 465. Messages per day won't be included. I just set that to a random number that's pretty high. Minimum time gap, leave that empty. Then you do want to have one, let's say master inbox for the domain. So you want to make sure that you do set up um, something like um, you have your your admin, your main master domain. You have your main um, your main inbox. I often use G Suite for that, and all the replies they go there. Um, doesn't have to be on the same domain, so that's good. So you can just get send that to different domains. Um, would that impact? Um, deliverability like yeah potentially could but like i said from testing i've got between 20 to 30 percent open rate pretty happy with that um and whenever running a spam test it's not something that it really picks up on like a uh, different domain reply to address is not something that really is a big red flag from my research at least um i'm not Definitely not a, a real expert, but uh, I did some research on it. Doesn't seem to be a, a major red flag for spam filters. So um, I'm using it and it's working pretty decent. Then this is your, like, so the reply address is the one that you want to set up under IMAP because it needs to actually get the inbox and see if you read a reply and all that. So you set up um, that master inbox is the IMAP. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then um, in this case, I don't have a custom tracking domain. It's definitely something that I recommend. So for the domains that I'm setting up, I will set up a custom tracking domain. And that's that. So you just do this. You do the exact same thing for different aliases. You just use the exact same username, exact same password, SMTP, and all that. And you can set up as many aliases as you want for the same domain. And it will just, you know, rotate through them the same way rotates through inboxes and that way you can get how whatever type of volume you want out the door through sendgrid because sendgrid um i think you pay and i can look that up um let me see sendgrid pricing go so let's see how many emails that gets you uh, they're definitely ah there we go so 100k emails for 20 bucks a month i think or I think I have like 50, yeah, so I'm sending, I think 50K emails per month for 20 bucks. So they're they're pretty cheap, not the cheapest, but they're the ones that work with Smart Lead. Pretty happy with it. So that's that, that's how I'm setting up this. So I will be setting up a bunch of different domains, like all the generic domains, just at least uh, authenticate them for sending, then adding them to Smart Lead. And then I have a bit of infrastructure that's warming up for whatever test I want to run. 